Oh, I'm really stoked about it. <laughs> oh. Very nice. I need you to There's flash a done. Canadian flag up on screen <laughs> <laughs> with the Canadian national anthem right now. <laughs> oh, Canada. Yeah, continue. So um, <laughs> the snapshot, you can paste it on a PDF. You can also paste it in an email if you didn't know that. Whoa. What? A question. Yeah. Question. <laughs> question. question from the class. We'll take questions now from the class. Yes, oh. I would like to ask a question now. Uh, can I have it? Like, can I have it? <laughs> 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 Eddie and I learned a ton from this episode. So I'm not going to, I'm going to stop talking. We're just going to get right into it. So here's our conversation with Andrew and David from Bluebeam. So when you, when you were in Alaska, didn't your host have plane parts? Like summer one all over his house. Summer one, there was a plane. There was a Cessna 172, I think. Float plane. Yeah. That was in, parts in his garage and his son was a an aircraft mechanic yeah and worked up there in Fairbanks and so summer two when I went back the plane was built they had finished it wow. so he and if you're in Fairbanks Fairbanks has a runway that you can go in like regular wheeled plane but then they've also got a like a lagoon a lake in the middle of the airport that's just there for float planes mm, really so you can fly your float plane and you can actually land at Fairbanks Airport in a float plane. And huh. so we went out and jumped in the float plane. And he was like, let's go find a lake, which there's about a billion of them yeah. when you get out in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we were flying over bear and moose and all kinds of stuff. And he just goes and dips down into this lake. And it's like, all right, let's do some fishing. Get out on the <laughs> floats. Do yeah. some trout fishing. Like, yeah. I mean, crushed crushed the trout fish in that the day. trout yeah. out there built different too aren't they like they're <laughs> they were rainbow trout but i mean okay. it's not all right okay north georgia rainbow trout yeah yeah no fair enough not even yeah not even the same but you throw the the trout the live well is the float planes float so like he had a little door he'd open up the float throw really? the trout down into the float of the float plane that's your live well Really? Oh, he'd take up out of there and and we went home and ate it, which oh, if you eat trout in Alaska, you eat like you're a grizzly bear. Like it's barely cooked. You just sear it yeah. and then, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's yeah. a trout. You just yeah. warm it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. one take step away right from sushi. Yeah. yeah. But, oh man, it was amazing. Yeah, That's awesome. Um, okay, well, fun, fun stuff, Grandpa. Um, So you guys brought... <laughs> <laughs> well, long ago. David, all right, David, you, you brought gifts, man. Like you, you like came prepared and we did not, we were not prepared to, to give gifts. Um, sorry. Anyway, so. Oh, it's gift giving season. It's gift giving season. Yeah. Well, okay. And that has gone one way. Is what <laughs> this yeah. Point is. yeah, you didn't know. You didn't know it was. <laughs> okay. So why the chocolate again? Because. It's, okay. So it's. Is uh, this a Canada thing or what? what no, is this? it's a Dutch okay. thing. Like the okay. Dutch uh, celebrate something called Sinterklaas, uh, Feast of St. Nicholas. Okay. And okay. Uh, around December, yeah, December 5, you would you would uh, exchange some mm-hmm. gifts. And normally you designate like whose gifts are whose while there's a letter on the gifts. And so oh, okay. uh, it used to be like a pastry or something. And then they're like, let's, let's go upscale. So they said, let's, how about a chocolate letter? Super and so you hand out chocolate letters. For me, so. Eddie and Andrew, man. Like, yeah. that's very yeah. kind of you. And where yeah. is yours? Consumed already, dude. I oh. it didn't make it off of the table. It didn't two, make it off the table. I've never seen was, someone open one fast. so fast. Yeah. I, it was yeah, like Christmas morning. I'm like a grizzly bear with a salmon. <laughs> <laughs> if we're on that topic, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> give me yeah. that. But seriously, <laughs> I'm imagining you eating your chocolate in a river now. This There's is just good like visual. Little shavings, yeah. just yeah, flying out the chocolate side, jumping yeah. out of the river. Chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like one of those chocolate AI chocolate. images that gone, that's gone wrong. Let's like, see if we could get Dolly to generate something. Thing like that, maybe we'll pop it in the in the video. You see, like the can the can of smoked salmon, like jumping out of the river. <laughs> You're like, that's not what I meant by salmon. I love it. Yeah. Oh my gosh! All right, so more to the point. Thanks for the chocolate. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So Very thoughtful. But we're here to talk more Bluebeam stuff today, more tips and tricks. But 
more specifically, we got a couple buckets that we've had you guys prepare for yes. us. So what, what buckets do we have? What, what things are we going to cover? Well, the first one, we're going to look at takeoffs specifically, takeoff okay. and estimation. So that's the first bucket. Mm -hmm. I'll let you talk about the, the mathematical Yeah, we named, named the second bucket one plus one equals ten. <laughs> Still trying to figure this yeah, math out. The blue beamers are not yeah. great at math. We're not great we at math. We figured that out. No, the software will do the math for you, yeah. so it's been a while. That's right. <laughs> trying. Nice. Kind of wanted to show you some things or talk about some things where if you put a couple of uh, features together, yeah. you get even more efficiency than you than you thought. So it's Heck not yeah. just about doing this one thing and this one thing, but you okay. kind of put them together and Sweet. synergy. And then, mm -hmm. and then don't yeah. you <laughs> synergy. Oh God, put a <laughs> dollar in the jar, man. All right. Where's oh, our no. jar? Oh, Laura Lee, no. we need a jar. All right. There's um, no jar. We need a jar. All right. We, we need, need a freaking jar. jar in here. Um, and then there was one that was like, just kind of like quick hits too, right? Like just little tips. Yeah. And now stuff. I'm afraid I would have to put something in the jar. If I yeah. say the word don't, delay, don't no, say you're it. Fine. You're don't, fine. Don't, you're, no. You got he, it. It's he a said it was great, Silicon Valley, but great yeah. tools. <laughs> okay, <laughs> things you should know. Things that make you. Uh, oh, I didn't know I could do that. This is great. I feel delighted by this. <laughs> we can. We're gonna lean into that. I feel like. <laughs> we're going with it. Delighters. Delighters. Is that it? Delighters. Delighters. Right. Delighters. I like it. Okay. I like the yeah. term. All right. It's well, uh, let's let's get into it. All right. Let's stop wasting some time. So, what's what's the first thing on the agenda? What's the first thing on our list? Yeah. You want to kick it off? Sure. Bring it. Yeah. So, um, we know people got like software open all the time, mm -hmm. different pieces of software, and uh, and in the construction world, you often start with a site plan. Like, where's my building going to be located? Yeah. And so early on, um, you might not have much information at all. And so we've seen a lot of people resort to using Google Maps or actually mm -hmm. Google Earth. Yeah. But Google Maps has improved and now you can place a measurement on a Google Map, which is something I just learned recently because okay. I was okay. always a Google Earth type of guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, place a measurement on a map. So, so you call up the, the, the site area, place a measurement, take a screenshot of that. Now paste that into a blank Bluebeam PDF. Mm -hmm. Um, and now you, because you've got a measurement, now you can calibrate uh -huh. that image, uh, to the correct scale. Cause you've got that, you've got that measurement. So it doesn't matter if it's, it's 23 feet or 2,300 feet or whatever. Calibrate that. Yeah, you and it now it. you can put in, uh, you know, maybe like, well, what building size did we think we were going to yeah. gonna fit on yeah. here? So yeah. now you can like actually scale a building on there or, or check some other distances or how far are we away from, from other properties. <laughs> so, uh, you can build out a site That's from that, from that awesome. Google image. This is going to be a good conversation. I'm excited here. Cause <laughs> I didn't know that one. <laughs> Okay, well, we're that's, just, that's unique. <laughs> no, right out of the gates. Right out of the gates. Right all right. Gates. I like the calibration tool because, all right, so some some documents you get, they mm -hmm. retain scale and you use your uh, measurement tools mm -hmm. and everything comes through beautifully. Yep. Um, others, you you can or you need to calibrate, So, you, but you can actually calibrate to a scale. And I use that all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. something just got... Uh, like a scan document or something like that. Something that's right. kind of flattened yeah. out, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you can calibrate too, but I didn't think about using it that like way. Google Maps. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very that's cool. That's really cool. cool. We yeah. have, so this, we were talking about fishing earlier. We have an example that a customer sent us once. He was out fishing from a kayak, caught a fish, catch and release. You know, you come home and you say, so I, like scale the fish. I, he scaled, he took a calibration <laughs> off his kayak paddle nice. to scale the fish to prove to everybody how big his my fish was this yeah. big. My yes. fish was this big, <laughs> not like a perspective thing. No. Like, yeah, yeah. Hand yeah. Way yeah. Front. yeah. So lots of different uses. Any image you bring it in, you you have a known scale or a known distance, you can create, you can calibrate that and get oh, a measurement. Shoot. I mean, a source kinda, for fishing truth. This is not the yeah. direction I <laughs> expected this to go. I mean, we either, have solved me the a problem here today. So have you, okay, th this is me just kind of brainstorming ways to use this. Uh, is Have you seen people just take photos out on a job site with say like a ruler, a known length or something like that next to, let's say a doorway or an opening? Yep. Yeah. And then they're able to just kind of roughly estimate how big that is. Yeah, I was working with a. There's an architect in Montreal. Yeah, and uh, they're working on the um, 
a hospital there. Yeah. And there was some detailing near the spandrel panel mm -hmm. and like needed to get pieces made or whatever. But there's, right. in the documentation, there's a photo with the tape measure out. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. right on that yep. spandrel panel to show that like, and that, and then they scaled that. You know, took that photo, what? put it in a PDF later. Okay, we're you know we need the actual detail drawn, but here's the scale. What? You know, they could scale the rest of it from That's, that tape measure. All right, that, that'll yeah. get your juices flowing right there on how you <laughs> so, can yeah. use it. That's pretty cool. Like, yeah, bringing photos yeah. photos into PDFs and working on them there is yeah. well. I mean, that's very yeah. easy. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's something we did a lot of. Oh I know. yeah, yeah. But yeah, scaling yeah. off of that, <laughs> that's, that is something I've never had yeah. the and thought to do. So. And what's fun too yeah. is like you get the you get that Google Map image or or any image really. And Even then in street change, view, you can. Yeah. I've seen people pull in street views from Google Maps, and then you've got your elevation. And you can change the transparency of the of the image. So if you like want to yeah. overlay it on top of something that you've already got drawn and like, it's almost like you've got mm -hmm. your like poor man's augmented reality. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right. That was a, that was a good one. So what, what else we got? Cause we got a ton of stuff here and yeah, I don't want to like here. waste too, yeah. too much time. <laughs> okay. So the next one on takeoffs that I really like, there's a tool called dynamic fill. Have you guys not, I've, not I've Phil heard like of it, my I father, like. but <laughs> Phil as in, sorry. Not with a PH. Yeah, not with a PH, with an F. Right. That was bad. <laughs> we really need a jar. Yeah, dad joke jar. Dad yeah. joke jar. Yeah. 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 A synergy can jar. I, can I Venmo the jar? Because yeah. That's uh, fine. We'll put a QR code on the outside of it. There you go. We could get tips. QR code. Leave a tip. Leave a tip. This so, could go in good direction. So anyway, anyway dynamic dollars. fill. We're not always taking off, you know, very straight, easy areas. So yeah. dynamic fill allows you to uh, do a quick takeoff or do a takeoff quickly of an irregular shape. Hmm. And it works just like a paint bucket. So if you've got your, your floor plan or whatever, and you've got an office that's a bizarre shape, lots of curves, whatever, or, or like a parking uh, lot with landscaping, you know, I come from mm -hmm. the landscaping world, irrigation specifically, I like straight lines, landscape architects like curved lines, <laughs> it's a thing. So if I needed to take off an area, I basically use this tool to pour a paint bucket into that area and it will just start to fill it up and it'll detect the lines and it'll take it off. And then once it's filled the space, you can choose what kind of measurements you want to apply to it. So just a perimeter, an area, a volume, all of the above, and you set go, and it'll take all those measurements for you right in one click. People that are, are watching this on YouTube are probably seeing more of what we're seeing. Hopefully we can get some stuff in here to kind yep. of show. Yep. Um, but for the audio listener, it also, like, here's what I'm thinking. It, you're not having to like draw a uh, polyline in order to make this. Right. You're literally just clicking your paint butt, uh, bucket in one area and it's saying yeah. like, okay, I'm just going to start filling up. You click this. and hold and it just starts to fill out okay. like a blob. You can move it around. Yeah. Too, but yeah, it'll find those curves and those edges yeah. and it will do all those points for you. Yeah, I was thinking with a polyline yeah. if that was the yeah, case, but exactly. that's a time saver yeah. for sure. <laughs> and then the other yeah. thing on top of that too is when you apply the measurements, if you've got custom measurement tools in your tool set, you yeah. can select those and it'll apply those to that measurement as well. So if you have a specific <laughs> tool saved for with a subject of, you know, uh, gravel fill or whatever. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. select that and it'll calculate it and put that in there for you. <laughs> we know you guys like the tool chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of, course. of course. You remember in National Treasure where they find the president's book <laughs> and he's like flipping through it and he's like, it's, uh, this, it's the second one. Uh, oh, it's Roswell, uh, Roswell. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what I feel like right now. It's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So <laughs> the volume thing, I, I want to yeah. go back to that because yeah. it's 2D. Like, how do I get, how do I get volume out of something that's 2D? Because I got like a perimeter. I think we touched this last time. Actually. Maybe. I don't know. Like okay. you can assign a depth. Yes. That's not something that I really thought about until that was brought to our attention in yeah. the last podcast. Am I just completely blanking here? So, all right. Okay, so, so you, you, get, you can you assign get, like one, two, three, four, five, six inches of depth to a area. Yeah. That's right. And that's yeah. how you use your volume. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So I, I came from an engineering firm before I was at, at Blue Beam. And one of the things that we did 
you don't typically associate engineering firms with takeoffs maybe, but mm -hmm. um, one of our departments was uh, energy modeling and analysis, like determining the energy usage of, of a building. And so one of the things that they had to do was um, like count light fixtures, Yeah, which is this tedious mm -hmm. job. And, and this is a long time ago. So people were printing out the drawings and like using highlighters and then yeah. counting up how many times they made a mark with a highlighter. So, uh, you know, good news, we went digital and then people started using a highlighter on their screen. Yeah. Like not a highlighter on the screen, but a digital highlight. Highlight. I was about right? to say yeah. that yeah. that's silly. Right it's there. Silly. That's silly. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so, yeah, one of my colleagues, she was working on this uh, one day and I, I looked over and this is why it's good to be in offices and see what people are doing. And I saw mm -hmm. her like clicking one at a time on these to the light pictures. And I said, Hey, have you heard about, um, like visual search in Bluebeam? I don't know what, what you're talking about. And I said, well, you know, you search for words yeah. so I can like search for all text in a, in a document. That's pretty common. But in that same panel, in the search panel in Bluebeam, you can actually, uh, choose a visual search where you can select or, you know, capture a, a small piece of the drawing of a shape and, and tell, Blooming to look for all of those shapes and it'll go into that page into multiple pages you can even point it at a whole fi file folder on your network drive or wherever you're you're getting your files from and it will search for every image that's exactly like that in all that and then it'll say hey i found i found uh 223 yeah, of these images what? right yeah. and uh, what do you want to do now like, well, I want to apply a count measurement because I need to count them. Mm -hmm. And you just click that and count measurement and done. And now you've just counted 223. I showed her this and it like blew her mind. Oh, yeah. And I said, well, hold on. Like, it's like, so you've just saved yourself, you know, a couple of hours and it's done 95% of your work. Still want to go and do the quality check, right? And like, yeah, see, like see, what it, around, see what it picked see what we, up yeah, or whatever. Right, yeah. But now you have time to go for that coffee that you really wanted to go for. Because <laughs> you already did your, the main part of your work. But visual I, search is I like, it, yeah. I don't know if I knew about the visuals. Well, no, maybe I did. I, I, cause I was using, I was using it on numbers, I think. Cause like for uh, sheets and stuff hmm. on uh, structural drawings, for yep. some reason, these sheets and the bookmarks, like bookmarks are never created. So you got to recreate the bookmarks yep. and a PDF and all that stuff, clean it up. But yeah, I would draw a box around that and it would- It allows it you would, to do it by region. It would do it by which region. Which would be the too, same. Which is I'm a sure. sim, it's a similar thing. It's different, but yeah. Yeah. Right. But I didn't, I didn't know about the visual, visual search. search is, no, that's yeah. on me. We would count. I said I wasn't going to do this thing, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. But let me, let me make sure I heard you right. So you can have an open PDF and let's say we're searching for a specific light fixture, right? Yeah. A canned light. And that's got that symbol. Yeah. You can search within the document that is already open, mm -hmm. but you can also go down a layer and say like, yeah, all of the files within this folder on yep. my drive, I also want you to look at those. Yep. Yeah. So it's doing that too. Yeah. <laughs> like it, like it saved hours. That just, hour. make, that just makes me happy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's like, well, I was going to bill out like two hours for this job. Can I still well, bill out two hours for the job? I'm even saying, though it yeah. took me 10 minutes? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the, it's the, oh my gosh, dude, like tracking revisions too, making sure that one or two didn't get added in there. Yeah. Well, yeah, right? an example, yeah, right? a, yeah I, I heard of somebody once they, they were told like, oh, you don't need to count those. There's 48 of them. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, let me just check real quick. And there was like 112. Yeah. So like right there, you know, they didn't need to count this specific number. They just needed to verify that it was close. And yeah. in this case it wasn't. So yeah. Then they went back and they're like, no, we're going to do our estimate based on what we found, not what you told us there is in there. Yeah. So, Jeez Louise, yeah. this is going to be a four hour episode. All right. <laughs> what else do we got? <laughs> okay. Okay. La last one for the, the takeoff bucket. So this one okay. is called Quantity Link. Have you heard of this one? Want to teal? No. Okay. So Bluebeam Review is great for doing your takeoffs. You're doing yeah. your measurements, all that stuff. Yeah. We've got the markups list built in, which is that panel down below. It looks like Excel kind of. You mm -hmm. can do custom columns with subjects, types, um, 
getting your quantities and then applying dollars to them if you mm -hmm. want inside of review. Yeah. But a lot of people do their estimation in Excel. So we have a link in Excel. You open up an Excel spreadsheet. I will say this is just the uh, complete okay. edition. Okay. Um, you can open up Excel, and if you've got a template already built out for your estimation, you right-click on one of the cells in mm -hmm. Excel, and you'll see the option for quantity link. Yeah. You tell it what file or folder of files you want to link it up, and it will then link your PDFs to that spreadsheet and automatically take whatever you're taking off on the PDF and put it into the spreadsheet for you. So... You do your takeoff on the PDF, you go to the Excel spreadsheet, it's already done. That's sick. You picking yeah. up what, were you, what he's putting down? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm smelling what you're stepping on. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez Louise, dude. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I, just, like, I thought we just looked at PDFs in it. <laughs> Apparently not. It's a oh, tough one. It's a tough one to find because God, it's not you don't find it in, in review. That's right. That's you, right. You, when you install complete, it okay. will install just like it installs like OCR Golly module, no. but it installs this Microsoft plugin for for Excel, and so you would find it in Excel. So you've got your you've got your spreadsheet where you do your your estimation calculations, yeah. and it's like, well, I've got a cell for uh, asphalt area. Yeah. Okay, I right click on that cell and and point it to data in those PDFs with the label asphalt area because I want consistency, right? And now you pulled it in there, and now you know that cell is the basis for all the calculations you've got in your spreadsheet. And good gal, you guys, yeah. like I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm thinking of if you go into a new organization and they've got their bid sheet, right? Like yep. they've got everything, their counts and all that stuff. You've got a template there already yeah. that you are required per you know standards in the company to fill yep. out. Right. I mean, this is a hack. Yeah. This yeah. is a massive hack. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I won't do that. <laughs> Pulling those things together, like, yeah, I mean, using visual yeah. search in tandem with sure. this is something that you can do, right? Oh yeah. 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 If, Absolutely. You, if you apply a count measurement to the so the quantity link works for measurement tools. Okay. Okay. Right. So yeah. as long as it's a measurement tool that you're using, then you can link it to Excel. So you've applied a count measurement yeah. to those light fixtures. Yeah, you could you could pull it back. And it really helps with the consistency in your company, right? Like when people see that value of like, what? Like I don't mm -hmm. have to hand bomb stuff into our Excel spreadsheet. No, you don't. But also make sure your whole team is using those tool sets that we built because they have right. the right names. Yeah, they have know. the right like. So now you've now yeah. you've got people buying into the consistency because they know that well, it's going to save me. Yep. So I got to say that I, I I I figured that we would know a few of these <laughs> coming into this because we <laughs> we're very proficient at Bluebeam. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Use it every day, that sort of thing. Well, you do now. Use it, use I, it every I used day, to every, every day. That's one of the reasons why I kind of thought going into these different topics could be good is because I know I'm not taxing the software oh, in some no. of the other little areas that I just, I don't venture over to. The, the thing though, is just because I don't naturally venture over to them doesn't mean they're not like beneficial. Because knowing, right. knowing the stuff I'm already processing what other workflows am i doing what could i do with that yeah, yeah. uh you know what could i do when i'm taking a job off for steel detailing yeah say mm -hmm. you know what kind of easy button could i create there so yeah i mean mm. it's the juices flowing yeah, yeah. for sure yeah. and that's what we we love it when people start thinking like that because I'm assuming you're not thinking about like, yeah, I got to count some light fixtures later right you're no, thinking no, like no. how can i use that now what can i do that I need to do in my job, but how can I use that? And and that's where I think the magic happens yeah. because people are then extrapolating like, okay, this is gonna help me because I'm gonna I'm gonna use it in this way. I always used it in architecturals to find lintels. Like the the yeah. like searching by word or whatever. Yeah. Like so little things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a situational thing. Yeah. Because I mean, like it or lump it, we're working off of PDFs. Yeah. Like we're not at this place now where everybody's working from a centralized model and all this. No, we're getting PDFs. Yeah. So I don't have the ability to open Revit and mm -hmm. just say, 
how many lentils do I have? Like that's yeah. not something that everybody's afforded the luxury of right. being able to do, mm-hmm. um, especially in the sub trades. Yeah. Like it's just not and you, true. So, and I don't know how often this happens still, but remember when you get, you get drawings with the SHX fonts, like they're not real, real fonts, they're, uh-huh. they're lines. And so yeah. it can't like the text search doesn't work because it doesn't see it as text, but visual, but visual search can, can. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, we have a whole other bucket to get to. So what's our what's our next bucket? All right, of things? Now, now we get into the math. This is where we yeah. get into the one plus one equals ten. All right, I'm out. So yeah, <laughs> don't don't check us on that. We think it's close. Yeah. So, but it kind of relates to what we're talking about. Like we're yeah, you know, I think we've you know, already with the vi- the visual search plus the quantity link is a good example of that one plus one. Like it's yeah. it's a couple tools used in tandem. Um, yeah, to get yeah. these big results, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What I'm really stoked about. <laughs> oh. Very nice. I need you to flash well a done. Canadian flag yeah. up on screen <laughs> <laughs> with the Canadian national anthem right now. <laughs> oh, Canada. Yeah. Continue. So, uh, <laughs> so watching some of your last podcasts, uh, you guys talked about compare, mm-hmm. right? Compare documents. Yeah. Talk about overlay pages. Yeah, people love those. Yeah, right. And uh, and the benefits uh, for those of you that are just new to those, like the the compare talk, compare documents is great because it takes the, the same doc or a revision of a of the same document and it will cloud all of the changes. Yeah. Well, that's great. Except now you look at the clouds and you don't really know what's changed. You just know that something changed. Yeah. So it's good because you know something changed, but you don't really know what. Mm-hmm. Overlay pages is great. It's like this light table type of idea where you can take multiple PDFs, uh, different versions or, or different uh, disciplines or whatever, but Blooming will, will overlay those and in different colors and where, where different colors shine through, that's where the change happens. Mm-hmm. So that's great because, well, now I know what the change is, but it's also hard to see everything visually. Like if the change is big, right? If, the, if a room shrunk by two feet, yeah. I'm going to see that. Like I see red lines instead of black lines. So that's no problem. But if it's like some little detail off to the side, unless I'm zoomed in quite a bit, I can't really see the color difference. Mm-hmm. So what we have customers do is combine the two. Do both. Why not? Yeah. So do compare documents and you create, Blue will create this, this PDF with all the markups. Then you do overlay pages with with the documents again and once that's done then you import the compare pages document onto your overlay pages document okay and now all the cloud markups sit on top of everywhere there's a change detected by the overlay right so just layering on there that's right so now you've We've got the markups on there. Uh-huh. Now people are like, okay, that's cool. Combine the two. But the magic is, is now that you've got these, these clouds, mm-hmm. these markups over top of each change. And now you can use those like in the markups list. Yeah. I can use those for tracking, right? These are all these changes need to be tracked somehow. And I, w- I need to make sure that I do something with them. Right. So I can use the markups light list to, to track that. I haven't had to create a new list. Yep. Right. Um, and yeah, the, so the markups list now helps you with your back checking of all the changes that happened on, on your documents. Very nice. Yeah. I use, I, and I talked about this. I used it extensively on a run of jobs, yep. like just doing the compare, but I always would do just the overlay. Right. And I never actually added in the clouding function on it. But yeah, yeah I can see the value in that, especially on the repeat projects where just things are just, yeah. it blends together yeah. R- yeah. a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing that would gig you is not, like there would be... Heck, even the overlay good, would blend together. We yeah, would have good that overlay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, like it, it looks it's, like a Christmas tree a lot of times because it's like yep. green and red. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Um, so it looks like if there are a lot of changes, it looks like Christmas just happened because you got a lot of green and red. Yeah. but. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that your eyes are always like drawn. No, and, no. Yeah, and one of yeah. the so comes up not not a ton, but it does come up where people are like, yeah, I, I know what you're saying about overlay, but we've got a guy or girl, whatever, on our staff that's colorblind. Uh, yeah, like yeah. overlay's not okay. working for us. It's okay. all you know. It's all great. Oh, 
how about some cloud markups right on top of that that change? Yeah. Well, now yeah. it's now it's accessible for everybody. Yeah. Good point. Right. Yeah. yeah. And and you can yeah. do a quality check with all those changes, and you with because you've got a markup now, mm-hmm. um, you find one where it's just like a small change in text or something. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't need to worry about that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, that's good for you because we just found out recently you can't see green, so that's weird. Yeah, greens and blues, I struggle with. Greens and bit. blues. I, who, I knew, know who, knew? Huh? who knew? Who knew? He was looking at the Christmas tree, and I was like, it's all gray. So anyway, um, what else we got? <laughs> <laughs> well, Keep so we're, yeah, we're still talking about the markups list. Okay. Um, and, and you guys have talked before, I think, about custom statuses. Yes. Um, uh-huh. Right, where, where there's a status column in the markups list, and it um, doesn't matter if it's custom statuses or not, but you can yes, change yeah. the status of um, a markup. Right, yeah. yeah. I'm, and I'm with you now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so like, I've placed a markup that says, uh, you know, please change this light fixture yeah. to... A1 instead of A2. The status column, you can, somebody else can then change the status of that markup to complete. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Great. So we know that's done. Um, status columns is super helpful, as you mm-hmm. know, inside of studio sessions. Yeah. Right? Studio sessions, I can't edit your markups. I can't, I can't change them, but I can change the status yeah. on them. So that's the one power I have on with your markups so I can communicate with you. Yeah. Um, so super helpful in studio sessions. The issue always is, well, how do I get the statuses inside the studio session? Yeah. And how do I do that easily? And, um, because custom statuses travel with a PDF, Mm -hmm. right? So you need to get them in the PDF before you upload it to the studio session. So that's a, that's a bit of a document management workflow where it's like, Mm -hmm. Hey, before I put this PDF in the studio session, I got to remember to add the statuses. Mm -hmm. So what if there was a button that you could press that would just add the statuses to the PDF so or to good. or to a folder of PDFs? Okay. Like, I don't know. Would that be helpful? Yeah, maybe. Okay, occasionally. <laughs> I think buttons are nice. Yeah, buttons are nice. Buttons so are good. In the complete uh, version of the Blooming, um, you can do scripting. Okay. Have you guys ever experimented with the scripting? Not at all. Inside inside review, it's it's kind of scary. It's like, well, I'm it, not programming. Yeah, yeah I don't like, write I'm script. Just, I don't yeah. typically write like video scripts and yeah, in Blue Beam, but yeah. you know, yeah. Go, so, okay, go on. So scripting, there's yeah. a number. There's a number of of <laughs> um, kind of yeah scripts that you can in in coding language that you yeah. can that you can create inside of Blue Beam Review, and some of them are like, well, how would I how would I use this and yeah. and look, you know. I'm not a coder. I don't, I don't code. I just work for a software company. Um, so this is something that we, we showed at our conference uh, a number of years ago, somebody on our, uh, on our team. Um, you can create a script that does this cool thing where it's like, first you got to set up a, a blank PDF mm-hmm. that has the custom statuses built into it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you just have that stored in a known location off to the side. Yeah. What the script does is it says, take that blank PDF. Okay. Add it as the first page in all these PDFs over here. Okay. Save that. Then delete all those first pages in those PDFs. Save that. And now the status columns have been transferred from this blank PDF to all this folder of PDFs over here in about a second. So I can import. So it's like you're, import import, you're importing. Yeah. yeah, you're importing a PDF just to get the prop and saving it, so you get yeah. the properties. Yeah, yeah. And then you're deleting that PDF because you don't need it. You don't need it anymore. And by that, by doing so, you've just transferred the statuses into all of those PDFs. Now they're ready for a studio session. A question. Yeah. Question, question, question from the class. We'll take questions now from the class. Yes, yeah. I would like to ask a question now. Uh, can I have it? Like, can I have, can I have it? it? <laughs> <laughs> like, who do you know that has said script, and is this available for me? Like that. That would be my question. So, I can easily send it to you. Yeah, maybe not, not just chocolates, but also yeah. Scripts. Ooh, we get scripts yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Is Lots this, of gifts today. Is this something we could share with anybody listening? Yeah, I feel like there is may be a, other is listeners. Okay. Like oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So email us, guys. Uh, yeah. Contact at brospodcast.com if you want this. 
and we'll we'll send you a copy of it we'll, as soon as as soon as we get it. Sharing is caring, everybody. Sharing is caring. <laughs> it's the giving time of year. It, it is, is the, the giving, giving time, time of year. year. Unless you're us, and then we just got. We no, this give. this airs later than yeah. Uh, the, yeah. No, it's we're not in the giving time yeah. of year when this airs. So, well, that's that sucks. Yeah. But we're really still devastating. No, no, but you're, we're said. giving though. We're yeah. just we're just yeah. naturally generous. That's what yeah. we are. Yeah, we don't hoard our information. We give it everywhere. Like just we share it everywhere. Well, good for us. Good for us. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, moving on. Get us out of here. <laughs> what else <Yeah>. we got? <laughs> so kind of related to that. Because I'm all about like, yeah. Came from an engineering firm. I was in charge of building some standards, building some processes mm -hmm. that I wished everyone would follow. I'm a rule follower. I, but <laughs> like sometimes people don't, don't do that. Um, Firstborn? Nope. Shocking. You yeah, broke that shocking. rule. You did. Yeah. You did. You broke the rule. <laughs> no. Oh my um, gosh. Good yeah. for you. <laughs> so, so I just gave the example of where you inserted that as like the first page and then deleted it because yeah. you don't need it anymore. Yeah. This one's not, you don't need scripts for this or whatever, but um, taking that concept, there's information in a, in a PDF you want to transfer to another, to another PDF because you want to review drawings or you want to do whatever. So you need those custom columns. Well, why not? Why not have a cover page? Why not have a page that you insert um, as a communication tool mm. before you upload it to a studio session? So we've seen this done in the past where um, you create your blank PDF, but it's not blank. It's, it's got custom columns built into mm -hmm. it already. Um, it has instructions. Here's how we do design reviews at our company. Uh, you guys have talked before about uh, custom tool sets where you can export them to BTX files. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you can import those as attachments. Like they look like markups on a PDF. So you have your, your tool sets mm -hmm. on, the, on the PDF, whatever you want yeah. um, in terms of what you can fit on a cover page. You add that to the PDF document before uploading to a studio session. And now the people who you're collaborating with, they're like, well, I'm new to this other company, this sub trade that whatever. Yeah. Oh, look at that. There's this tool set that has my company's name on it. Oh, I'll, you just have I'll it. just double click on that. And Boom. now I've got my tool set. Oh, how do we do design? Re oh, there's some instructions here. Yeah, <clears> yeah, <throat> yeah. Or, um, oh, I'm supposed to change the status of something. Oh, guess what? The statuses have already been imported. Yeah. And so you're using this cover page as a great, great way to set up the whole team for success because you're not relying on emails or a, or right. a training or whatever. Right, right. You've got everything in one place. We talked about the cover page last time and that being kind of utilized in different ways. And I, yeah, I think that's a really stellar way of like transferring a bunch of knowledge and information out. Uh, but that was a project-based thing. This is more like a, a team-based Right, like yeah. getting everybody set on the same stage to use the same tool sets, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, either or. I mean, it's used a lot in studio sessions, collaborating with external partners. Mm -hmm. Hey, start here. I I did a, a presentation once and I called that file, start here. Yeah. Probably put an exclamation point at the beginning, you know, so that shows up at the top of your file right. list. Put that yeah. in a studio session. Um, I remember years ago, our founding CEO at a conference, it might've been at the, 2013 Bluebeam Extreme. <laughs> David Rockin the uh, that's the a vintage. Flex. That's a, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. David Rockin the, that's the vintage wear here. Uh, <laughs> he described a PDF as a container of information, and I had never thought of it that way. Right? Yeah, I always thought, yeah. oh, it's an electronic document, but no, yeah. it's a container, and you can put all these things in that container for other people to use. And I thought that was yeah. such a great sort of visual idea of what a PDF can be. So yeah, yeah good idea. That's, I mean, it's good stuff. Okay. What else we got in this list? This one, I, lo I love this one. Um, we're still in the math. The one plus one equals 10. This is, okay. I think, one plus one plus one plus one equals Four, 16 and a half 40. or something. 40 could be. Um, it combines a couple of different tools here. So it's the snapshot tool, which is kind of like being able to uh, copy, like, mm -hmm. you know, Word document, you copy it, highlight a word, copy it. Yeah. The snapshot tool allows you to either drag a box around something that you want to copy or click different points if you want to get real tight into that visual thing. Mm -hmm. um, 
it takes a copy of it and it's a vector based copy, which just means it's super high quality. It mm -hmm. maintains all the line quality and everything. So you take a copy of an image, you snapshot it, you paste it on your page somewhere. So now you've got it. So let's imagine uh, we're missing a door in a room. So I'm gonna take a snapshot of a door that exists on my floor plan. Mm -hmm. So now I've got that copied. I paste it where I want it on the floor plan and I want it to stand out. So then I right click on that new markup and I say change colors, I change it to red. So now everybody sees this is a new door. And then I might wanna use that door again on other drawings or other projects that I have forever. So I add it to a tool chest. Maybe it's architectural symbols or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I work in PDFs that have different scales. So what I'm going to do is set a scale to that tool set so no matter what PDF I put it on, it will appropriately scale that markup up or down based on whatever I'm using at that particular moment. So to recap, <laughs> <laughs> to take a snapshot. Keyboard shortcuts that's, G. That's, that's oh, yes, G, G is a good one to know. Yeah. Keyboard that's, shortcut that's G, yeah. Yes. Well, also side, side, this is the half, I don't know how to, Anyways, uh, I use toes. <laughs> toes. Okay. Use your toes. I'm gonna, yes. Yeah. Use your toes. Do you mind if I put my feet on the table? Maybe a little. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. We won't do that. Um, the snapshot, you can paste it on a PDF. You can also paste it in an email if you didn't know that. Well, what? Or a Word doc or anything you can, else. So you yeah, can hit you can G. Get, you can hit G. Yes. Do your snapshot. Yes. And then just do like a control it's, it's V. It's in your clipboard. Yeah. So you can paste it into whatever you want. Yeah. G, control yeah. V. Yes. That's yeah. awesome. I yeah. love doing that. Yes. Yeah. You knew about that? <laughs> yeah. Hey, what the you frick, said man? something a minute ago what? too. Like that moment where you walk by somebody's desk and yeah, you yeah. go, wait, 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 what did you just do? Yeah. Like yeah. that's one of the things I, I kind of miss with the, the remote working yeah. we yep. do. Yeah. Just that. Hey, w wait a minute. What the like heck was that? You walked over to yeah. your neighbor's desk and they just do something a different yeah. way than you yeah. do it. And yeah. all of a sudden you went, I've been working around that. Like, yeah. and it just <clears throat> opens your eyes. But, yeah, that yeah. was the best. We'd be in the office and someone would come over and be like, hey, David, can you, can you blue beam this? Yeah. Be like, well, what do you mean? Like, well, I need to do this and this and this. And I know you know how to do that <laughs> yeah. in blue beam, <laughs> but I don't. Can you blue beam it? Like, well, let me show you how to. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. I got you. I yeah. got, shout out to uh, the bugs, the user groups, right? So Bluebeam user groups for this sort of thing. So if you are yeah, working from right. home, yeah. right, and you aren't in an office and you want to be able to collaborate with people, find new ways of using the software. Look up your local bug. Very yeah. nice. I like the positive spin there. Casey's really going to appreciate that. Yeah, that she? was yes. She's going to send you another chocolate. What? Yeah. Really? I, I'm committing her to that now. It yes. won't last long. I it won't be, that. it might not be a Canadian Dutch chocolate. I'll take any. Is it Canadian really? Dutch? Can you beat that? I, I think, I, I think these are Dutch Dutch. Yes, you can. Oh, Dutch Dutch. Dutch. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like Focus, a, boys. Anyways. What oh, else right, we got right. here? All right. Um, are we still numbers, in we one plus one? Math. We had our, yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh yeah. So, okay. <laughs> snapshot. <laughs> change color. Add it to your tool set. Scale that tool set. Now you've got a scaled markup that you can use forever. Man, we just, wherever. We just yeah. hit a full on tangent on that one, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's staring right at you. Already ate yours, but I'm like, it's gone, man. It's gone. It's, it's I'm really, bad. really sad. Yeah. Good Pretty memories, though. So. There, uh, I mean, memories. screw that, man. Come on, let's no, just get it. All right. So is that one plus one equals That's ten? A one. Yes, at least. All right. At least so ten. what are the small ones? The right. the little ones. The little nuggets of wisdom. The delights. The, the delighters. delighters. The delighters. I'm going to start with <laughs> my favorite one. I think a lot of people know this one, but it is a crowd pleaser wherever I go. Okay. Kids' okay. birthday parties, not as much, but um, various bar mitzvahs, others, yeah. <laughs> hotel lounges. Yeah, we're available for hire. Yeah. <laughs> your, kids love, your kids love us. Um, <laughs> it's, can do balloons. It, it's but, just, <laughs> yeah. They're just the round balloons, though, not animals or anything. <laughs> animal balloons. Yeah. yeah. The just, only thing he knows how to do is the blue bean logo. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your kid, it's a blue bean logo. I said a horse. No. <laughs> this party stinks. Yeah. Get what you get. <laughs> Uh, it's the add a leader line. Add a leader. So okay. we've got a call out tool. Um, 
you know, which is basically a text box and a leader line. So you mm -hmm. point to that, you make your comment, and then you point to what you're talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about this. Well, sometimes you're talking about this and you're talking about this. I don't know what, how wide the screen goes. Yeah. <laughs> but you want to have two leader lines. So what a lot of people would do is they would do their call out and then they would grab the arrow tool mm. and have that coming from the text box pointing to something else. Well, if you just right click on that markup, you can add a leader line and point to multiple things. You can add as many leader lines as you want. You can have them coming out the left side, the right side, the top, the bottom. And isn't there also a hotkey for that? Isn't that is it you shift click? Well, that's Q, yeah. right? But it's then you Q can shift the, click on the markup, I want to say, to um it add just add, automatically adds a leader add line in, instead of in having to right click. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then you can also, there's like the little elbow on the leader line itself. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And if you, yeah, if you hold, hold shift, shift and hit there's the a elbow. little plus. Yeah. And, and click that. Yeah. And you can do more of them. I that love, yeah. 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 I, an engineer did that on a meeting we were having one day. And that was one of those moments yeah. where I went, were you, hey, de were you delighted? Wait, I was absolutely delighted. <laughs> yeah. See, I just, and it, it changed works. life. I mean, yeah. <laughs> better than a horse balloon at a birthday party. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> all right. Okay. I'm, wow. Well, yeah. We, yeah, that Did might be the new Blue Beam commercial. Yeah. With Blue Beam. Better no. than, yeah, that's going to be the new tagline. Better than a horse balloon at a birthday party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. TM. That'll I, <laughs> make that happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> so here, here's another delightful one. Have you ever received a PDF that maybe came from a scan and it's sort of crooked? Because it was scanned in and it's crooked and it's just, oh sure yeah sure sure and wow. then you need to most do, of the time yeah, yeah. right <laughs> so we have the ability to straighten that out so if you open that document and you go into I don't know um, page setup I believe it is under okay. documents page setup if I remember correctly okay you get a menu. And one of the things, uh, you'll see a box there and it's rotation and you can just kind of incrementally click that up or down arrow and it will, it will show you a preview of the drawing on the PDF rotating and you can get really precise on how you want it. Or if you don't want to click that button, there's also something else that says get line. Okay. And when you click get line, it takes you to the drawing and you basically drag a line across the top of your drawing, let's say. Mm -hmm. And once it does that, it'll automatically adjust it. To Align to that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's how you can uh, rotate the image or the content of your PDF on the PDF itself. Again, if it's like a different layer, you've got your paper and then your drawing, you can kind of do that deal to it. So that's really cool. The other thing that you can do there is let's say you get a large format PDF. So it's mm -hmm. 42 by 30 or whatever, and you want to print it out on, and you've just got your printer at home that's eight and a half by 11, you can change the size of the PDF and it'll scale the drawing down so you could print it out in a small size, half size, 11 by 17, whatever you want, all from that same menu. So that's super helpful. It's delightful. That is delightful. Yeah. So delightful. Thank you. Delight us some more. Del David, would you like to delay, delay, David? Delay. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Sure, we delay, delay Andrew. Delay. Oh, that's getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> that was delame. All right, yeah. move on. <laughs> Boosh. Dead yeah. jar. Hit the yeah. QR. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one company I worked at, they had a very specific um, way to store your files in the network drive. Like a very, you know, folder system was mm -hmm. very specific like yeah. don't put that file in that folder it has to be in that one and and you find yourself doing a lot of clicks to find the files that that you need oh yeah of course so this one's something that it's been in review since the dawn of time but probably not not used very much um, but there's huge power in it in the in the file access menu on the so side of the the interface which is basically you know where you see recent files mm -hmm. and that sort of thing well, you have the ability to create um, or to pin files in there. Like if you've got a file open and you see in your recents menu, you can right click on that or, or um, I think there's actually a pin icon. Yeah. You click that and you can pin that file. So then you can access that same file over and over again. Oh, so That's nice. Yeah. Because yeah. like then I don't have to go and look for that file. 
But what I really love is that you can also, when you click that pin, you can, you can create a category. And a category is like your own custom file folder. So I'm going to create a category called Project A, because that's the project I'm working on. And now when I'm opening files that are like I had to hunt for them yeah, in the network drive yeah. or on SharePoint yeah. or wherever they're stored. Or heck, even in the recents, right? Yeah, like, yeah. In, yeah. I find that file and I'm like, I like I have to reference this for the next three weeks. Pin that file to project A category. And I can build now a that that project A category with all the files that I need to reference for the next few weeks, even though they're in different locations, for me, they're in one location where I need them right in the Bluebeam interface. You know, uh, getting back to where you were is a whole ordeal oh yeah, when you're working on a computer. Like you yeah. got files open. And I, I mean, I've even been known at the end of a day to just turn screens off instead of shut my whole computer down so that I can just come back in, turn the screens back on mm. and have you know, everything where it was yeah. better, better yet is being able to easily access back to that point. Mm -hmm. I have found in sessions, sessions is really nice for that because when you leave the session, you come back in, it'll take you back to the point you were. Yeah. Yeah. And right. so that's a, it's kind of an easy button on getting back to that. Mm -hmm. I had no idea though, cause I use that access history mm -hmm. a lot. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll, I mean, I traverse that menu all the time, but I had no idea you should right click on literally everything you on should. a computer and just figure out what happens. Right, yeah, yeah, really. yeah. yeah. right click on a on a markup and the amount of options there are there. Yeah, just it's crazy. Yeah. But yeah. like in different menenus within within the Blue interface. But it's an interesting point. You're like, I want to be back where I was. Right. There's actually a a checkbox in the preferences menu built in review that says um, basic says shorter than this, but next time I open up Bluebeam, open up all the files I'm currently working on. Yeah, you can fit that in the menu. <laughs> but it's there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> last, but last opened. Last opened. Oh, look at you. Look at me, the marketer <laughs> in the room. Mr. Brevity. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Welcome. Yes. Well done. Does that delight you guys? You're welcome. All right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. You're out of your lane, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> so earlier, I think you mentioned labeling pages, bookmarks, things like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when you receive documents that don't have page labels, you just get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Yeah. And it's nice when you're looking at the thumbnails view by the way, if you don't know the thumbnails view, that's another panel where you can mm -hmm. see little thumbnails of each drawing so you can get to them. Yeah. But if you want to add page labels, we have a feature that will, uh, we call it auto mark. And it, uh, in the menu, it says add page label, I believe it is. And it allows you to select a region. So you go to your title block and you can grab a region. It'll give you, uh, so you'll drag a rectangle around where it says, uh, page number, and then you could do another region too for page label and however many regions you want. And then what it will do is it'll look on all the drawings in that same region and it'll automatically label your sheets for you by that. And then if you wanted to create bookmarks, you could also create bookmarks from it as well. So it takes a couple of seconds to do. Yeah, and then yeah. that way, all of your sheets are labeled. If you then split the document up, the labels go with them. So it's really a nice way to be able to add the labels to your Very sheets. Nice. Yeah, that's Very nice. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right. Any more delightful things? There's there's one more tool. We just released okay. this a couple of months ago. It's a multiply tool. And we've been asked for this tool for a long time. So Bluebeam isn't meant, it was never designed to be um, an authoring tool, a design tool, but we right. know a lot of people using use it for sketches and things like yep. that. So yep. this new multiply tool, it's kind of like a cross between an offset and a, an array in mm. AutoCAD where you can place a markup or a measurement or even a form field and then uh, right click. So there's that right click again. And then now there's something that says multiply and it will allow you to basically take that markup and multiply it however many times you want, you set how many times you want it and the distance you want that offset from the original. And it'll give you a preview. So if you're like, I want this line to go from here all the way to the end of the page, you can say, you know, 10 and be like, oh, I need one more. Let's make that 11. Gives you the preview. And then when you like it, you hit apply. So 
for me coming from an irrigation background, if I needed to lay out sprinkler heads, for example, and mm -hmm. I knew all those heads needed to be eight feet on center, I could draw that first one, say, give me 10 more of those eight feet on center, hit go, and it'll lay those out for me. Yeah, that's that's nice. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's another one that makes the mind race where I'm going. I'd, mm -hmm. How could we, yeah. Yeah, where, where would I put that? I'm not, like, it's silly, but I mean, just representing in a sketch, uh, a piece of grading. Which, oh yeah, which is like a series of lines. Yes. It's yeah. all it yeah. is, but yeah. that would be perfect for that. Right, that I would be able to accurately represent that. Yeah, uh, but I, I'm that'll make the mind what is, right because yeah. before you do the first one and then you use your measurement tool to draw out like okay, ten feet from here. Yeah, you know, and you're you're doing all these extra markups. You can do it, but now it's just all kind of contained in that one yeah. quick thing. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, a sloppy version of that isn't isn't it a control um, control D for duplicate? Or am I thinking of Illustrator here? Because I know Illustrator has that function where you drag a line yeah. out and then you just you can hit Control D D D and just and it'll just copy it out at that same spacing. I don't yeah. know why I was thinking Bluebeam had that. Um, yeah, if you press the if you hold down the Alt key and then click on a markup, it'll duplicate it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Well, guys, yeah. this was good stuff. Like this is a lot of. Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't expect to not know uh, <laughs> most of these. <laughs> so, I, and and I, I would like to think that a lot of people will listen to this and and feel the same way of like they've just found a lot of new ways to work, which is really cool. And that was our intention with the whole episode. So, success. Yeah, we hope so. Mission Great. success. Yeah, right. Heck yeah. Right. yeah. All right. So, um, before you go though, we always like to ask our megaphone question. All right. Yep. So, and this is just a, you know, how, how would you want the industry to operate after you're gone? All right. A little morbid. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So if we, if we gave you a megaphone, a soapbox yep. to talk to the industry about something that you just, you know, you feel deeply in your soul about the industry, mm. what would you want to say? What would you want to leave the industry with? I'll let you guys arm wrestle over who wants to go first on that. Yeah. So I, um, my son recently, uh, he's in high school one of my sons in high school and he is in a, in a co-op term. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys have co-ops in, in the U S but in Canada, yeah. it's kind of like, so he's working as a framer, nice, which is great. Cause that's what I did. Um, you know, 20 some odd years ago. And, uh, so he's working with these guys and, uh, I don't know if you, if anybody knows 16 year old boys, they don't like to get up in the morning. <laughs> um, you know, it's really hard to, to get them there on time in a good mood. Yeah. Um, but girls, when, too. girls too. Girls <laughs> too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when he, but when we go to pick him up, cause he has to, he does half a day on the, on the construction site and then he goes to school in the mm -hmm. afternoon. But when I pick him up or my wife picks him up, like he's in such a great mood. Mm. Like he's had, he's had the best time. He loves being out there. And, and what I've realized is that, um, you know, in the last four years, things have changed for the workforce in general. So construction yeah. or not, right? But those of us who are typically in an office, um, now we're working remotely. Yeah. And we've lost all of this personal connection. Yeah. And yet in the construction industry, they've maintained that. Like, yeah. like out on site, like people are still face to face and still interacting with people, which is what I think, I think is really important to people, important to my son, important to me. And so my, my message to the industry is like, you got to take advantage of that and use that. Like you're, you've got this opportunity to build relationships with people like my son and, and, um, and teach him things and impart on things and things don't have to be like they were when I was yeah. framing where I was like, well, we'll see if he lasts. Yeah. We won't give him any instruction and we'll just see if he can make his way. But like, we've got this opportunity for personal connection in the in the construction industry mm -hmm. and i think we need to take advantage of that uh because it's i think it's a really amazing human experience that can occur on a job site that's awesome man. all right andrew <laughs> yeah follow okay. that okay yeah. i'll do my yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm probably yeah i think i'm going to build on top of it a okay. little bit all as right. opposed to trying to come up with something brand new so here here goes let's see what what comes out um <laughs> So for those that are not regularly in the field amongst their colleagues, I think it is important to try to 
maintain or create or foster personal connections. And an easy way to do that is just every so often, just text a colleague of yours and something simple, just, hey man, hope you're having a good day today thinking about you. That's it. I do that from time to time with people that I work with currently or in the past or friends, family, whoever. And uh, I think it, it makes a big difference to make us remember that, hey, we're doing these things. We're building this world together, even though we're separated. So I think that's one. This is going to be a three point, <laughs> a three pointer, I think. Well, so not, lose, not lose count like earlier. Okay? Yeah, we right? won't do that. I, yeah, it's three <laughs> points that will equal 52. <laughs> the next point on top of that one is, again, you kind of touched this, is just, if you're somebody who's seasoned and you know what you're doing, you've been in this industry for a long time, pay attention to the new people, invite them in. You know, this is, this industry is close. We want to be all better together. So that's one of our core values at Bluebeam. So mm -hmm. I, I nailed that one. <laughs> um, but teach them what you know, you know, bring them in. Cause I, I remember, you know, early on one of my jobs where I came in and we're all tough, you know, and everybody, you come in kind of exuding this um, sort of, I, I know everything. I'm not going to ask any questions. I'm going to, you know, and everybody's watching you to see what you do know. And I remember one time um, I had to back a trailer up and the whole crew was there. And the guy gave me the keys to the truck and he goes, back it up, Andrew. And he was like, this guy's never backed a trailer in his life. This is going to be awesome. The entire crew was working there. Well, I grew up boating. I knew how to drive a trailer. <laughs> so I backed this thing up perfectly. And everybody was just like, well, <laughs> <laughs> and, but, but the, the point is like, teach people, instead of just tossing me the keys, ask me, hey, man, do you know how to do this? Do you want you know, me to teach you how to do that in a parking lot when the whole crew's not working. So that kind of thing. And then also third point, um, two and a half is, <laughs> is, um, you know, be open to learning from the new people. They have different perspectives. Mm -hmm. They have different things that they bring to the table. They're, they, ha you know, it's different growing up now. So if you're in mm -hmm. high school today or fresh out of college, you have a different view of the world. Don't be, you know, too set in your ways to, to not ask them how they see things or how they would interpret it. Um, okay, final point. I have three daughters, um, Bless you. women in construction. <laughs> I just want to say, if you have colleagues who are women and they're in this industry, take them under your wing, support them. It's not easy, but they did the work to get there and get into this industry. So I would really encourage everybody to... Um, make them feel welcomed, understand what they have to bring to the table. Because again, sometimes it's a different perspective and one that we all need mm -hmm. to hear. So um, just shouting out the women that we work with and, yeah. and that live in my house. So <laughs> that's it. I'm sure that was over 60 seconds, but that's it. Yeah, bro, that was way over 60 oh, seconds. Man. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my bad. My Andrew, bad. David, thanks for joining us this week, you guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah it was thanks. fun. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah, really appreciate it.